one in the universe. That is the question a new $100 million search for extraterrestrial intelligence wants to answer. Come with us. The biggest hunt for alien life forms yet will span the next decade. Instead of shouting, is uh, anyone out there into the abyss? This will be all about listening. Scientists will look for signals from the one billion stars closest to Earth and the hundred nearest galaxies. With the help of the world's best telescopes, the venture claims to be 50 times more sensitive than previous endeavours. And famed cosmologist Professor Stephen Hawking has given his blessing to the project. Somewhere in the cosmos, perhaps, intelligent life may be watching these lights of ours, aware of what they mean. Or do our lights wander a lifeless cosmos? We are alive, we are intelligent, we must know. Russian internet billionaire Yuri Milner is the one footing the sizable bill for the new search and he joins me live now. Yuri, welcome to RT. Pleasure to speak to you. Um, I'd love to know what your financial advisor said when you said that you were going to be spending 100 million on a project that, that might not yield any definite return on investment. Why are you so committed to this project? Well, I think it's, uh, it's an important project for uh, the whole humanity. We now have the technology, we uh, have the capability, we have the software and hardware to really uh, try to um, get to the answer to this uh, pretty fundamental question, are we alone in the universe? And I think in the next 10 years uh, we would be able to make significant progress which is uh, order of magnitude uh, more significant than uh, in the last uh, 55 years. To, to be putting so much in personally though, presumably this is a personal passion of yours. Well, uh, my background is physics. I have been uh, always interested in uh, these big questions. Uh, I have uh, uh, met Stephen Hawking for the first time in uh, 1987 uh, at the scientific conference. And uh, in the last 10-15 uh, um, years, uh, a few things came together to allow uh, uh, this project to happen. One was uh, the discovery of uh, many billions of Earth-like planets in our galaxy. Uh, second was uh, uh, the possibility to um, arrange uh, for the time with the largest telescopes and uh, finally uh, the uh, development of hardware and software which made it possible to process the signals 100 to 1,000 times uh, faster than before. Obviously this is a very difficult project you're trying to uh, achieve here. You'll need the very best help. Um, you do have Stephen Hawking though. How hands-on will he be? Well, he is uh, really providing uh, an inspiration and uh, he uh, was a big fan of uh, this initiative. He is uh, um, really our uh, trusted advisor and uh, we've been very lucky that uh, he blessed uh, the launch of this project uh, uh, that Monday. But of course, um, uh, he uh, uh, has certain limitations of what he can um, actually do operationally, but we will be consulting with him on uh, all major developments. And as I understand, you, you're specifically listening. You're not going to be sending out messages yourself. Why, why have you chosen to do it this way? Well, sending messages uh, happens to be a controversial subject in the academic community. There are a lot of people, including Stephen Hawking, who are uh, uh, asking us to, and everyone, to exercise caution in contacting and trying to contact um, alien civilizations. And, uh, I think uh, uh, s listening is just a mi much safer bet, on the other hand. We do have these amazing machines, uh, uh, the radio telescopes, and uh, if we're just uh, listening, uh, we're getting uh, information and knowledge. Uh, communicating, sending something back is uh, something that uh, I think needs to be disputed by uh, 
uh, not only scientists but also uh, society at large. And I think uh, uh, sending uh, signals uh, uh, without knowing where the signal is going might not be the best idea. I'm sure you must have thought through what it would be like to, to, to actually find a signal suggesting that there is alien life out there. But what is more frightening, actually finding that there is life or finding that we are alone? Well, I would say that uh, both uh, options are pretty staggering. I think that uh, being alone sort of puts a lot of responsibility on us. Uh, if uh, the universe doesn't have any backup, it's, uh, it's really um, a lot to think about and a lot to uh, uh, worry about in a way. Um, I think we would uh, have to realize that we need to cherish you know, the only planet we have at this point. I think this will also call for diversifying within the solar system. I think uh, if we're alone, then uh, the call for for example, colony on uh, uh, Moon on Mars would, um, I hope, receive additional boost. If we are not alone, I think that uh, uh, would also be a, a pretty important uh, discovery, and uh, it will raise uh, the whole uh, the whole host of other questions, uh, like, for example, uh, do we send the signal back? Uh, how should we think about uh, communicating, uh, and so on? But I think that um, the, uh, the experiment itself uh, for the next 10 years uh, hopefully will uh, provide some clues or limitations on the possible signal. And then if we don't hear anything, it will not be conclusive that there is no one out there. So we would need to continue the experiment. Yuri, I'm sure that you've heard just a few hours ago, NASA announced that they'd found in a galaxy far, far away, a second Earth as they described it. Does that mean that you have some competition now? Is the, the chase afoot? Well, uh, it's not really a competition. I would uh, find it as a rather complimentary uh, uh, piece of information. It basically supports our assumption that there are uh, many Earth-like planets in our galaxy, uh, probably uh, multiple billions of them. I think uh, one of them was discovered, um, and uh, we just know statistically that our galaxy is so large that there, there should be billions of those out there, and that gives us, uh, uh, gives us the confidence that uh, the experiment is really worthwhile. And finally, Yuri, I just wanted to ask, as I understand, you're actually going to be making any information that you get, your findings, open to the public. So if you do find aliens, we will know about it. It won't become a top secret uh, piece of information in the government. Well, it's uh, really uh, uh, more than that. Uh, uh, first of all, there are no governments involved in this project. It's a truly global uh, international initiative. The telescopes are located around the world. But uh, we will do more than uh, not hiding the information and the results. We will open uh, the raw data so that uh, other scientists around the world, as well as amateurs and uh, anyone who would like to be involved in this, can do the search themselves so that they, uh, maybe they will be lucky to find something in the signals and in the data that we will provide uh, 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 to the public. Yuri, it's a fascinating project. I wish you the very best of luck with it. We'll be watching very uh, enthusiastically. Speaking to Yuri Milner, the founder of the Breakthrough Prize in DST Global. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. A mystery in the sky. A Wichita man is looking for clues tonight after spotting something unusual. KSN's Kianga Kelly spoke to the man and went in search of answers. Kianga? Is it a plane or is it something else? We were overwhelmed with news tips just before 6 a.m. about reports of that bright light in the sky. This is a viewer's video, and we called the Denver Science Museum, University of Denver, and the Fisk Planetarium in Boulder to get some information. Someone near Indianapolis got video of a weird light in the sky, and people think it was a UFO. Do you see it? It's the bright light behind a cloud that keeps panning around the sky like a spotlight there to the left of the sun. Some conspiracy theorist thinks it's a cloaked UFO. <laughs> Biologists are trying to unravel a mystery in northeastern New Mexico. More than 100 elk found dead on a ranch about 20 miles north of Las Vegas. 
The news comes as a shock to game and fish investigators and to hunters just days away from hunting season.